care, lead, innovate, motivate, balance. These five tenants reveal ways of creating a more profitable and customer-centric pharmacy. What will you discover when you climb with RMS? Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to CLIMB. I'm Brad Jones. I'm the CEO and founder of Retail Management Solutions. It's my pleasure to welcome you to another CLIMB event. Now, many of you have been here before. You're, you're not first-time viewers, so we're really happy to have you back. We also have some first-time viewers, so I'd like to take a moment to just describe CLIMB to you. By now, you know that it stands for Care, Lead, Innovate, Motivate, and Balance. Those five tenets are things that you do every single day in your pharmacies and your communities. Here at RMS, um, our mission is to make our customers the most profitable and customer-centric in the industry. And last year, we decided to create Climb to bring that same philosophy to you, to help you improve your bottom line and to improve patient outcomes. So at Climb, we bring you speakers and panelists, some of your peers that talk about the things that they're doing in their pharmacies that make them successful and that are working, and we share that with you. Climb is not about our products and services, so you won't see a demo of our product uh, or anything like that during Climb. It's about bringing you the kind of content that's going to help you improve your bottom line and help you improve patient outcomes. At the end of Climb, like at the end of the hour today, I do something called After Climb, where I do a deep dive into a portion of our product for our customers. And you're welcome to stick around if you're not our customer, but that one is specific to our products and services. Okay, so let's move on. I'd like to welcome my co-host, our Director of Operations, Brandon Bolesky. Good morning, Brandon. Good morning, Brad, thank you. So last month's climb featured Robbie Stokes with the presentation on improving gross profit margin. Uh, this was one of our most popular sessions to date, and we had great interaction from the audience. Uh, please take a few minutes to check out the recording if you missed it live. Um, as always, we definitely appreciate your feedback. So at the end of today's presentation, we'll be emailing out a brief survey. Please take a couple moments to share your thoughts with us there too. Uh, and remember, if you have any questions during the live broadcast today, feel free to use that little Q&A button down at the bottom of your screen. So I have an exciting announcement. Uh, you can now find RMS and the CLIMB webinar on the Pharmacy Podcast Network. Uh, Karen will be dropping a link in the chat in just a few moments here. Um, so you can find and follow our podcast programs there. So coming up today, originally we had planned to talk about Meds to Beds this month, but we decided to postpone that due to a couple of speaker conflicts and honestly a need for us to continue to pay attention to the health and wellness of our teams here internally. So employee wellness is now the new topic for today's presentation. Uh, we will be rescheduling the Meds to Beds presentation, but if that was something you were really hoping to see today, just drop a message in chat and we'll connect with you and talk one-on-one -on -one after the presentation. Um, as we do each month, we'll also be presenting the RMS Climb Ascenders Award. And then after Climb, uh, as Brad mentioned, we'll, we'll be doing a, a version 832 product demo with Star Plus. Um, Brad will be highlighting some new features there and uh, give you all a sneak peek of the new RMS will call application as well. But before we get to any of that, Brad, tell us what's up first. Yep, so thanks, Brandon. Yeah, in just a moment, I'm gonna bring on a well-known keynoter Many have heard before, um, Terry Norvell, and she and I are gonna sit down and discuss empowering your team uh, through training to help grow your profitability and your customer centricity. So we're gonna keep this real casual. It's just gonna be a discussion between the two of us. Terry and I see eye to eye on so many things and we've had so much fun preparing for this. So um, I'm excited to do that. And so let's just, uh, if you have questions, by the way, type them in and we'll get to them as we, as, right as we're going through things. So. Well, let me get let me introduce Terry. So many of you recognize that name, Terry Norvell, uh, from one of the many conferences you attend annually. Uh, and she also was in our first climb back in October of last year. Terry's a change agent. She's a trusted leadership coach and business advisor to entrepreneurial organizations and associations. She's also a dynamic and engaging keynoter uh, who inspires and aligns teams. With more than 25 years of experience and over 950 executive coaching clients, Terry is really a proven leader. Uh, prior to founding the Enterprise Incorporated, I'll say it that way, uh, I-N-N-E-R, the Enterprise Incorporated, uh, her executive leadership includes VP of Training and Marketing with a $1.2 billion property management and development company, uh, general manager of a five-state uh, $9 million temporary housing firm, president of Silicon Valley Chamber, and a founding member of two nonprofit organizations. 
and she's a certified business growth specialist. So wow, she's a great speaker. I'm really happy to have her. It's great a pleasure to welcome Terry back to Flying. Good morning, Terry. Welcome back to Climb. Morning, Brad. I'm thrilled to be here today. Uh, it's great to have you. And I'll tell you what, it's been it's been fun over the last couple of weeks talking and, <laughs> and realize just how eye to eye we feel and 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 how and just how uh, passionate we are about this topic. So you know, today we're going to be talking about building great pharmacy teams through leadership and training and. Uh, um, you know, it's things that you teach, things that 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 I've been doing here at 20, for 22 years, and it's just really a lot of fun to get the opportunity to share uh, with our with our customers um, and with all of our viewers. So let's just get, dive in because we've got about 35 to 40 minutes, and we could spend an hours on any one of the things we're going to talk about. So right. let's just start with a simple question: Why are we having this conversation in the first place? Well, I love that broad, big picture conversation. Um, and, you know, it's essential. It's essential to talk about the importance of training and leadership because it's through leadership that employees are able to do their best. Um, it's about heightening engagement. It's about setting your team up for success. And it's really the leader's responsibility. And so often, the conversation is around there's not enough time, there's not enough money, we don't have enough resources. And I think this conversation today, Brad, is about busting through those myths, because from a leader's position, training, setting people up to do the best they can, because I, I believe there's a premise here that people want to do the best they can. It's just so often they don't know what's expected. They don't know, they've not been trained to elevate, to step up at a higher level. And that's a leader, a manager, whatever the department head, whatever we want to call that person's, you know, title, it's, it's, it's their job. It's so important. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and you're right. And I think as we get into this conversation further, we're going to, we're going to explore the fact that this, this isn't really an option. <laughs> yeah. If you want to, if you want to succeed and you want to continue to grow your business and and, uh, and also, as we were talking, it really starts at the top. It doesn't start at the bottom or in the middle. You have to, it has to start at the, the top. So you want to take that on for a little bit? Yes, I pulled a quote from John Maxwell's The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Success. And it, it, he reminds us, as, as he does, and he's such a, um, a leadership guru, that only if you reach your potential as a leader do your people have a chance to reach their potential? So it really stems from investing in yourself as a leader so that you can then also invest in your team. And when we say it starts at the top, it, it reminds me that it's the, the leader, the manager, the department head. It's their, their role to define the vision for their group or the vision for the company overall, um, throw in the mission, like why are we here? What are we here to do? The purpose, because now more than ever, studies confirm people are motivated by that sense of bigger purpose and knowing that they're contributing to something bigger than they are. And without that vision, the mission, let's, let's throw values, right? Values drive behavior. Without those core leadership, big picture, tools, it's tough for employees to show up and do their best because 
Yeah, it's like, it's like, if you don't have goals, and you don't have that target that you're shooting for, how, you know, how do you know how you're doing your best? And, and that's, that's top level work. Absolutely. Yeah, the, the, um, um, it's, it's also ongoing work, right? I mean, it, it's something you've got to be doing all the time. Yeah. And uh, so my senior management team and I just participated a couple of weeks ago in a three day diversity and leadership uh, um, a conference. Uh, it was all day, each day, and we sat through tons of sessions. And <laughs> one of the sessions we sat through, the, the speaker that I sat through, the speaker uh, talked about um, an article in Inc. Magazine he had just read, and he shared it with us. And Karen Decker is going to share a link to all of you that are watching uh, to, to this here in just a second. Uh, and, the, and it was entitled, uh, Developing These Five Habits Will Make You a Once-in-A-Career Leader to Employees. And mm -hmm. we're not going to go through all five, but I think that the first one really is uh, going to take us into what we're going to talk about today. And I will read that one. And the first one was, create meaning. Yes. Uh, and this ties to what you were just talking about. And, and then I'll read it. Understand that meaning is what motivates employees in a manner that sustains. Foster meaning through actions such as being clear on the organization's purpose, encouraging employees to define the legacy they want to leave behind, and by granting large swaths of autonomy. Also create meaning for employees. You also create meaning for employees when you invest in their personal growth and development and foster their sense of confidence and self-esteem. So <laughs> take that on. <laughs> yeah, that we could spend the next, I don't know, number of hours unpacking that one. That's so spot on. And it reminds me of um, you and I were talking about Daniel Pink and his you know, book Drive and, and the research that he's done around what motivates people. And that just summarized it, a sense of purpose, right? Why I'm doing what I'm here to do, a sense of autonomy, you know, tell me what's expected and then give me the freedom and a sense of mastery, getting better. Because most people I have found, and I'm gonna give you a caveat here that if you have people on your team who don't wanna get better, I'm going to encourage you to question if you have the right people on your team, because that's what life is. It's growth. It's excelling. And, and especially the millennials and everyone in the workforce, I'm going to go with that. They, they want to get better. They want to do the best. And how can we give acknowledgement and add a girls and add a boys and, you know, the dopamine hits if people don't know, you know, what's expected or how to do their best. Well, you know, and I think you hit on an important point there, too, because um, sometimes we make the mistake of thinking that growth or getting better, um, that they have to want to climb the ladder um, mm -hmm. to be the next CEO or something like that. Uh, and that's not really the case at all. Um, we can help a clerk that, that only wants, that doesn't want to do anything other than, than be a cashier. Um, be the best cashier and the best customer service agent that exists on the planet. And we can continue to give them trained to do that. And, you know, and, and so I think we make a mistake sometimes as business leaders to think that these are people need to be growing through moving up and not everybody wants to do that. No. And isn't that a good thing? Because if everybody was wanting to move up, how would we create that stepping stone, that ladder where we can, encourage people to do better the key is to encourage them to do better in their current role right and if they want to take on like you know we have this conversation around techs um i have a client who has 10 techs and a variety of other people all reporting to the owner and it's like that is just too many direct reports what about creating an opportunity for techs to excel and have that opportunity for advancement and growth through being a tech and, and, and desiring to stay a tech and get better as a tech and take on more maybe project work or managing, um, you know, being in a more of a leadership role. There are so many opportunities. And today more than ever, the workforce wants to see the opportunity for progression. And I think that's, that's been true. It's just now we're talking about it and we need to do something about it. 
Yeah, and and uh, as we were talking, you have uh, you were just reading an article with about thirty. I think it was thirty stats uh, that I think you're going to share. Not all thirty, but you're going to share a few of the key ones. So let's just get right on into that because these are eye opening. I think for should be for a lot of people. They are. It's it was an article. It just came out in March, so it's very relevant, and it was focused on millennials. And yet, I think that millennials are really shining a flashlight on what's important for most people, if not everyone, in the workforce. And so let me let me just share some of these that the pithy ones. Now know that millennials are those age 24 to 40. And it said by the year 2025, they'll make up 75% of the workforce. That's not very far away. So it's significant the statistics that this article um, shared, it, starting with 30% are not engaged. So we could say disengaged. So if you think about that, if you have 10 employees, you have three employees that are creating drag, um, that they're not lifting up, they're not customer centric. Sometimes they go so far as to sabotage your high performers, which is why high performers leave, because this study also said that this group will leave because of a coworker that is causing disgruntledness or is a bully, like they're, they want a work environment that is engaging, inspiring, and calls forth for them to do their best. So I thought that was really interesting. Um, 62% are looking to switch jobs. Like, yikes is my only comment. Some good news, 44% would be more likely to increase their engagement. And that's what we're talking about. We want a turned on, effective, engaged workforce if their managers met with them regularly. That's almost 50% for just a little bit of TLC, a little bit of time. And I know we're going to talk about some of these solutions, Brad. Let me give you a couple more because I like these stats. 95 percent think job specific training is essential to do their job efficiently and get this they want mentoring they want coaching that's 95 percent of your team of your workforce wants to to know how to do their job better right. one last step 90 uh, percent another high number want to grow with their current company if provided a chance to grow their skill set. Brad, this is why we're talking about leadership and training being married up. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think uh, <clears throat> the stats can be a little scary, oh. but those last two are so encouraging. Mm -hmm. um, but you do have to take you, but it's in the court is, you know, the ball is in your court, right? As, as the, as the leader here, um, because I, we all know, and we all hear the, the most expensive customer is the new customer, and it's you know, easier to keep, you keep your customers, but that applies to employees as well. Yes. So every time you have to hire and you have to train a new employee, it's taking away, it's expensive, right? And to lose those poor employees and have high turnover, you've got to fix that. And so <clears throat> what we're seeing is the stats are telling us that teaching, training, showing them how to do, be a better version of themselves, how to be a better version of, of whatever their role is, uh, is, is absolutely essential. So the old excuse, if I don't have the time, <laughs> that doesn't work anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I, I, we, we, we've got all this now, people want solutions. So let's kind of, let's start delving into how do we do this? What are, what are some of the steps? Because we've got to give people some takeaways here. Yeah, we do. And, and I love uh, tangible takeaways. So, um, you know, Brad, as you were just talking, it made me think about so many articles I'm reading right now that people want to be seen and appreciated as a whole person. Mm -hmm. Because I've always said who we are on the inside is who shows up in the workplace. And so more than ever, it's, Sure, the statistics said to increase their skill set. It's also to increase who they are individually because that's who's going to be interacting with their coworkers, 
with your patients, with your customers. And so it's an investment in, in the why and the big picture, which we talked about, you know, knowing that they can make a contribution for your company and in their lives. Because Brad, you, in the, the number one uh, point that was out of the article, the five things to do to be a, an unforgettable manager and leader, it's about helping people see the legacy that they want to create. And so really diving into what's important to them and how can you help them marry up what your vision and mission is and what they're here to do so that it doesn't really feel like work. It's just a, a really an extension of who they are. I don't know, I'm going to go kind of airy, manifesting in your business with your customers. So, I mean, it stops being work. It starts being their calling. It starts being their passion. So they're not just punching a time clock. They're really doing their hard work. Yeah, you know, and, and, and that ties into one of the courses I took a couple of weeks ago as well on being, uh, uh, being an inclusive leader. And, um, and one of the key things in many of those leadership classes was talking about being an authentic leader. Mm -hmm. And and being, you know, and, and that brings out the authenticity of, of all of your employees, but you have to be authentic and you have to, you know, you have to, you have to share, you have to, you have to be, uh, you have to share your vision and, and encourage people to be authentic. And I think that's, and they want that, but that's how it comes. If they can feel like you just said, if they can feel like they love coming to work because they get to be themselves, they don't have to be somebody that they're really not. Uh, it makes a huge difference. It does make a huge difference. It's absolutely true. And another um, solution, another way is to provide um, mentors. You know, if we go back to the, the text again, maybe you set up some sort of a mentoring program, someone who has um, a committed focus, committed attention, commi a commitment to helping somebody else step up because They've walked in those shoes before. They know what's important. You know, the, the, the mentoring, the feedback, whether you have a mentor or not, maybe it's their manager, maybe it's the owner, maybe it's the department head, that people want more feedback. They want to know, am I doing, am I doing this well? Is there a way I could be doing it more effectively? And it isn't like big sit downs all the time. It, you know, statistics say they want just five to 10 seconds. Just give me a little at a boy, a little at a girl, you know, let me know that I am, I am doing a good job here. And, and that is more important than ever. And I can't tell you in how many leadership classes I've taught that it's the a generational thing. I do believe, well, they're lucky to have a job. You know, I've told them what to do. They should just do it. <laughs> Old school thinking, my friends, oh, you know, they really want that acknowledgement. They want to know five to 10 seconds of your time isn't very much to specifically say, I saw you doing this exactly what's in alignment with our value of, of innovation. You know, thank you. You're, you're, you're really um, a key contributor to the, to the organization. Yeah. You know, I, I love the mentoring thing and I'm in our senior staff meeting this last week. Um, Brandon Bolesky, who's, who's co-host and our director of operations, he used a term I'd never heard before, accountability buddies. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I love it. I don't, <laughs> so, um, and, you know, so that's something that we're talking about. But you, the thing, the other thing that I want to point out from that is, is that um, the only, if, only is, you can only have so many managers in your organization, but you can teach everybody to be a leader. Every single person can be a leader. And so that, and I think that accountability buddies, they don't have to be a manager to do that, right? <laughs> um, they can, you can help them become a leader and, and, and mentor that and brand new employee. So we're in the process of putting this in place. And I thought it was just really cool. Oh, that is a highlight of my day. Brandon, you're talking my music, man. I mean, if I had a gold star and I was in a room with you, I'd give you one. <laughs> that is, uh, listeners, please write that down. It's it's free for the, right, Brad? They can take this idea. And oh, absolutely. Yeah. This is such a good idea. Yeah. Yes, yes. Brandon, good job. Um, and I think what goes right along with that is being able to, to demonstrate 
exactly what you'd like to have done. It, it, what comes to my mind is um, the processes, you know, and sometimes you need to change up processes and in making sure that people understand and, and then that accountability comes in. It, it, and yet for the, the buddies there, it's hard to hold someone accountable if they're not clear on what the expectation is. And so often I find that people, leaders, managers, directors, owners get very, very upset when systems and processes aren't followed or are disrupted. And yet oftentimes it's because people lack clarity. And so the piece of training that's so important is that clarity ensuring that, that it's understood and that the skill set is there. Yeah, absolutely. You, that skill set has to be there and, and, uh, and you have to focus some training attention to the skill set as well. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it, there's, there's just so many aspects of where you need to be training. Um, <laughs> and uh, so that brings to one of the, you know, one of the points that uh, we were talking about earlier um, with, uh, with training is, is uh, um, you have to, uh, or not necessarily have to, but you should, a good practice is to, to ask your employees. Yes. Right? Oh, yeah. You, you know what? Sometimes we think as managers and as leaders, we have to have all the answers and we need to be all knowing and all seeing and you, you know um, how simple is it to ask people, you know, what from your perspective, because they know what they're comfortable doing. They know when they really shine and, and when they feel they deserve some acknowledgement because they've, they've really stepped it up. And what would help them to continue to do that? You know, um, I love this question. It came from, um, he's an owner of um, multi-sites and, and he said, he's going to ask, and I know we're going to talk about one-on-ones near and dear to my heart. And in each of his one-on-one -on -one conversations, he asked his employees, what would it look like for you to step up 1% this week? Just 1%. So can you imagine if you have everyone on your team stepping up just 1% a week? That is scalable. That's compound effectiveness. And so going back to your, your, the point of asking, it might be, well, for me to step up 1% every week, here's what I would need to learn. Here's what I would benefit by. Here's some ideas I have. And then maybe you brainstorm. You know, maybe it's like, well, that idea, yes, and, right? Yes, that's a great idea. And it makes me think of, that's another key takeaway if you want to jot that down, to play that I call it a game because I think it's fun. Yes, I love that idea. And it makes me think of this. Because we're, we each know in our hearts what we're good at and, and where we might want to, you know, spiff up our skill set. And your man, managers might not be able to know that because you don't know the inner workings of what's going on all the time, nor should you. No, absolutely. Um... I mean, you have to, I think that's the other thing. One of the things that, you know, I learned in that class or, you know, I guess I've known, but, but it, it, it's enhanced in that class on inclusive mm -hmm. leadership is that, 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 that word inclusive is an important part. And it does, it does amount to engaging uh, with your employees on a regular basis mm -hmm. um, and having your manager do that if you're in a larger organization, right? So, um, you want to talk a little bit more about that? I do. Okay. I, I do. It's, 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 um, it's so important. And I, 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 I'll share why. Because I have seen teams escalate. I have seen bottom lines impacted strongly. I have seen engagement go up from simply doing what we call implementing a one-on-one -on -one coaching program. And it can sound daunting when, excuse me, when people have so many direct reports, because it's really a one-on-one -on -one conversation. It doesn't have to take any more from 10 minutes, 15 minutes, maybe 30 if you get really into it. 
with each employee, with each direct report. Ideally, I say once a week, I get a lot of pushback on that. And then I go, okay, once every other week, you know, that's not too many times. And, and, and I still sometimes get pushback. Okay. At least once a month. And yet the ideal is once a week to have a sit down with each direct report and, and it's an investment in them. It, it demonstrates that a, a manager, their manager cares about them. And it's an opportunity to not have phone distractions, not have customer or fellow employee distractions. It's really one-on-one -on -one time. And doesn't each employee deserve time with their manager for 15 minutes a week I mean, for the results that you get? And so I, I printed out a form, which I'm happy to send over to you, Brad, so that you can, we can make it available because there's really just four basic questions. And, and yet some people have taken and, and blew it up a little bit. They have agenda items to it so that employees come prepared with um, their answers to the questions, with their agenda items. And um, sometimes managers will tie in the, the, the regular, I call it a regular, the, the more tactical um, activities or agenda items with, with a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And that's fine. It just depends on how you, you want to um, set it up. And yet the essence of the one-on-one -on -one is really about the person, not so much about the, the tasks, even though you're going to talk about the tasks because that's what they're there to do. And, and yet you're investing time and energy and TLC with that person. And the first question is always, and I know always is a big word. Um, so what are you proud of? You know, what went well? Where can I give you acknowledgement? And surprisingly, Brad, that is one of the toughest questions for people to answer because as a society, we think it's bragging. We think, oh, I don't want to toot my own horn. And yet we know that's always, there is always more going right than not. And yet we don't take time to celebrate that. We kind of get, it's kind of a little screwy when you think about it that way. Yeah. And so you always start with, you know, what are you proud of? And here's the key, as a manager, that can throw an employee off. And what if they don't come up with something, right? It's like, ah, so be prepared that you've noticed something and you can start the conversation with, well, here's what I noticed. Here's what I overheard when you were talking with, you know, Mr. Jones or, you know, so what's, you know, what are you proud of? What do you plan to focus on? Making sure there's alignment or what do you, what do you want to learn? And what can I do to make, you know, to clear the, the, the obstacles? Because that's what employees want their managers to do, to, to clear the way so they can show up and just do their job without having to deal with some, you know, challenges that are thrown at them. And then the fourth question can be a little daunting. Um, so I say it's not for the faint of heart unless you really want the answer. And it's, what can I do better? What can I do to better support you? And that question has proven over, I've, I've been using this for probably 15 years now, has proven to open the gate for really important, critical conversations that need to be discussed. And without that question, they wouldn't have happened. Um, and so those one-on-one -on -one conversations, even if you just want to do it a little more sporadically, I would so encourage every listener to, to give it a go with one caveat. If you're not going to follow up on the conversations, don't start them because what message does that send? And, and I really advise to put a standing appointment on your calendars so that every week or every other week, your employees know they they own you, right? They get you that one-on-one -on -one time and it's their opportunity to bring up, you know, whatever is important to them in a private way. And I'm going to go back to care because I know Brad, you and I talked about it's important to demonstrate care. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so, yeah, yeah. You, you can tell I'm pretty turned on one-on-one. -on -one. So many things for me to unpack there is I've been thinking about as you've been talking about these things. Um, I, I see it all the time you know, when we do our reviews with our employees uh, that, that, that they always have the difficult time and they tell you they have the difficult time of, of telling you what they're proud of, uh, you know, and 
And, uh, and you're absolutely right. Having one in your back pocket that you can share uh, is really important because it tells them that you're noticing it as well, uh, that you're paying attention, that you are engaged with what they're doing. So I think that's a really important one. Um, the other, the other uh, one is we, we're, we're, we're just talking one of the, one of the idea on it that I heard in, in this conference was, uh, is asking them how they contribute to the mission, oh. how their role contributes to the mission or the values of the company. And so we were talking about this in our senior staff meeting, when, but I said, here's the thing, before we add this, we need to go, you need to be able to answer that question for them when they can't. Because if they say, I don't know, and then you say, yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> what does that send, right? What message does that send to them? You don't, yeah, your, your job's worthless, <laughs> right? So, so yeah, um, so you have to be, you have to be prepared. And I think that's the other thing. When you're doing this as a leader, you have to be prepared. Don't go in blind. You don't, you gotta, you gotta know. Otherwise, don't do it. Because you're absolutely right. You send the, you completely send a horrible signal if yeah. uh, if you're not prepared. So yeah, I'd like to add one more step because what a lot of the the managers, the leaders do is keep a binder, and so they file away um, either electronically. Some have you know iPads or I'm an i girl, um, uh, or something electronic where they keep notes. And so they keep notes on the on these forms and some people double side them so they're not wasting paper. And there's a tab in the binder for each direct report. And uh, so these pages go in. So there's follow up because that goes back to accountability. So often we have conversations with, oh, they got it. They're going to do it. And yet it's ethereal unless it's written down. And there's that follow up. And managers have shared over the years that it makes them more accountable, which they like, and their engagement goes up along with the employee's engagement going up. So it's really, it's a win-win strategy and, and um, highly, highly recommend. Yeah. And that's something that, you know, so being a technology company, everything we do is electronic, but in our, our reviews are electronic. And so when we send the notes, the reviews, uh, so we write our notes uh, and that goes into the employee file, but they get an email with those notes. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we, when, when they say, these are the things they need to work on, it's there. And then that's talked about on a regular basis. How are you coming on this? Because you do have to hold them accountable. It also shows that you care and that you're paying attention. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the other thing. I, one other thing that you had said made me, when, when they're giving feedback about you, mm -hmm. that difficult question, the only way that works is if they trust you. Yes. Right. And that's all the things we're talking about. Build that trust. That's right. That's right. We could say that trust, even though we haven't used that word since we've been talking here, trust is that baseline. And all of these things contribute to, let's go to your trust bank account, right? And you want to keep filling in more and more components of trust and honesty, integrity, you know, saying, doing what you say you're going to do. There's so many ways to look at, at trust. And, and I have a whole course on trust. So Brad, you hit my hot button again. <laughs> uh, you know, trust starts within yourself. You know, so if we're going to go to the leader perspective. And I love the simple little example. You, you know, you trust yourself to brush your teeth every pretty, most people do every morning and, <laughs> and, and every night. And so to start with little things to build up so that you know you can trust yourself. You know, and people oftentimes have a, um, um, an interesting relationship with their alarm clock. You know, can you trust yourself to get up when the alarm clock goes off? Or do you play a game that, oh, I'm not going to trust myself when that alarm clock goes off. I'm going to trust myself to hit snooze two times. <laughs> <laughs> So whatever it takes to start building up that inner trust, because that is what then shines forth and how you can build trust with others. Oh, I had a roommate at the Air Force Academy that he trusted himself to hit the snooze button for about an hour. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think we've all experienced. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> well, Crazy. listen, we're getting close on time, and, and uh, I'd like to I'd like to give our viewers. Uh, uh, 
two takeaways. So we have about five minutes. Can we, can we, let's talk two takeaways that they can do. Yep. I think that um, one is invest in yourself as a leader. If you haven't already, there's no investment greater because let's go back to John Maxwell and his law of the lid that you've got a lid and, and no one, your law of your lid of your leadership abilities is going to set the, the tone, the limit for how high your employees can step up, how engaged they'll be. So the greater our as leaders, leadership abilities, management abilities, coaching leader abilities, being a coaching leader, you know, I, I lovingly say coach up or coach out and understanding what that means to you and to your organization and fellow team members, that all comes from investing in your own leadership skills. So I think that's number one. You ask for two. Number two, invest in your team. A, a leader's results do not simply happen because of their results. It happens through the team and setting your team up to be as successful as possible is, is essential. And Brad, you started it right at the beginning. It is essential. It really isn't an option anymore. You do have time. You have time for what you deem as most important and growing team members, that's, you know, giving them the autonomy. The only way they can have the autonomy is that they know what to do, setting them up for mastery, giving them that sense of bigger purpose. I mean, it, we've kind of come full circle. So, well, you know, it's, it, you, you say that I don't have time and I tell all my employees, whenever you hear yourself say, I don't have the time, that's a red flag that you should then analyze whether that's true or not, because it, what you're saying is, is you have, yes, we all have a limited amount of time, but you have time for lots of things and you're, pro, and it's about prioritizing, right? right? So if the priority today was to sit on the couch for an hour and watch TV, um, that took place, that took time from something else. Now that's not to say that you shouldn't do that. I don't mean that at all. Um, because you do need time to relax you need, and whatever relaxing is for you have to take the time to do that. It's part of balance in life. It's a very important part. But when you say you don't have the time, you have to ask yourself, what else have I prioritized in front of this? And then analyze, is that the correct priority? Mm -hmm. um, and oftentimes we find that it's not. Um, and there are so many books out there to read in the E-Myth Revisited. They talk about, uh, they talk about, uh, the, 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 the entrepreneur who is baking pies and she just, she bakes the pies and she doesn't build the business. And I'm sure you talk about that in your, in your business growth strategy classes. Mm -hmm. Um, so though, I think those are, that's really, really important. I want to also, this is an unpaid advertisement for Daniel Pink, but you brought his name up. We give all of our employees uh, the book Drive. Uh, we encourage them to read that book. <clears throat> I encourage all of you to buy that book and read that book. It's so inspiring. It's, it's, it, it's the psychology of what drives people. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's the most important business book I've ever read. Uh, and then when you read that book, you'll be hooked. Uh, I've had seen Daniel Pink a bunch of times and, and it's a lot of fun. So, well, well, Terry, that was right. awesome. Do you and have I any wrote, parting words? Go for yes. it. Yes, yes, yes. I'm so excited. Thank you. I have a favorite book too that I'd like to highly recommend. It's it, it, People might find it a little controversial because it's called The Nine Lies About Work by Marcus Buckingham. And okay. it's, it's an amazing read. Like I took notes and typed up five pages of notes from the book because there's so many um, important points for today, what we're going, what's going on in the workplace, in the workforce. So right up there, Daniel Pink is Marcus Buckingham. So, okay. So what we'll do is uh, viewers will, we'll post this. I'll have, we'll get that. We'll post uh, the link to the Inc. Magazine. We'll post the link to the article you talked about. We'll post the links to, to, to both the books. Uh, um, so you'll get all that information uh, on our website and in the newsletter that we send out after this. So, um, so you have all that. Terry, thank you so much. Now, the cool thing is you are back next month and you're taking the whole hour. So that means a lot less work for me. <laughs> so tell us what you're going to be doing next month. 
Next month, we're going to be talking about the business growth formula, business x-ray, the diagnostic tool on how to uncover and get to the root causes of what might be causing you challenges, um, like an undercurrent. We call them, um, you know, stop playing whack-a-mole, those little things that keep popping up. So I'm going to have, um, I'm going to see how the time goes, possibly two, I'm thinking more like three guests to talk about their experiences and key takeaways that they can share with your listeners and viewers on how to elevate team engagement, how to grow your business, how to make it more scalable, um, you know, whatever, come prepared with whatever your challenges and we'll, we'll, uh, the goal will be to provide resolution for whatever challenges you have through the experience of three CEOs and, and leaders who are quite dynamic in their own right. Outstanding. Well, thanks again. Appreciate it. Look forward to having you back next month. Um, I'm going to introduce our next speaker who we both know and who introduced us. So uh, one of my favorite people. Um, so, <clears throat> excuse me. So uh, coming up next, I have uh, Emily Kanata. Emily is a pharmacy industry champion. You, many of you work with her. She's worked with hundreds of pharmacies uh, over the past decade, coaching, training, and working with their valuable teams. Uh, focusing on management, leadership, accountability, motivation, operational experiences, and efficiencies, and the list goes on and on and on. Uh, so it's my pleasure to introduce Emily Kanata uh, to talk to you about employee wellness, something that's really, really important at all times, but during COVID, it's just been off the charts. So we'll come to Emily now. joining us today. Before I get started, I wanted to take a minute and explain who I am and why do I deserve the privilege of talking to you today. So my name is Emily Kanata. I'm a business coach and consultant and over the past decade I've worked with hundreds of pharmacies across the country in a coaching, training, and team development role. So I'm really happy to be here today and I want to thank RMS for first of all putting on the CLIMB series. I think this is such a gift to the industry. So thank you for, for putting this on in the first place and, of course, for inviting me to have a speaking engagement with you today. Uh, what am I going to talk about? Today we're going to talk about your most valuable asset, your employees. So after this past year, I know RMS reached out to me and they wanted to recognize the heroic pharmacy teams that have literally carried this nation through this crisis in the year 2020. It's been a, a crazy year for, for everyone. Um, the topic is employee wellness and how to care for your pharmacy team so that that will create a better pharmacy business. Uh, you really want healthy employees, right? You want a physically, emotionally, and mentally healthy employee. That is good for business, bottom line. Um, and this has uh, been a really rough year for everyone. Like I said before, it's put everyone through the ringer. Um, what I did over the past uh, few weeks since I was asked to do this was reach out to pharmacy owners that I have relationships with, and that is what I'm going to share with you today. So I'm a data nerd, a research nerd, and I did some digging, and I've come up with um, the things that I'm going to talk to you about today. So employee wellness, really it covers all five of the tenants of CLIMB. So care. The more you care for your team, the more they're going to care for your patients. That's awesome. Um, also, y we can consider leadership, right? <laughs> Showing up for your team during this crazy crisis and this pandemic has probably stretched a lot of you beyond what you thought you could do as leaders. <laughs> um, I know managing your own anxiety is one piece of it, um, that of your families, and then you have to put on your leadership hat, come into your pharmacies and help manage and lead your team, who in fact and in turn is going to be doing all of that for the community. I mean, that is a lot. That is a Herculean effort. So 
definitely leadership shows up in how you are taking care of your employees and looking out for their wellness. Um, innovate. That's a, I mean, we literally innovated the way that we live our lives, period. Um, motivate. This one is really, I think that this is a, has been a really huge impact because you're able to share with your team how much they're making an impact in their communities that you're serving. Um, being able to curate and really protect the culture that you're creating in your pharmacy is a huge motivator for your teams and really giving them a purpose. And what, what is their why? Why are they showing up every day? That's a huge part of helping them with wellness um, as well. And last but certainly not least, balance. I've heard consistently that teams are burning out, individuals are burning out. Um, so ensuring that your team really rests and recharges, um, otherwise they are going to burn out. And, and then that's not going to do anybody any good, including your community who they serve. Um, and plus, in terms of balance, you know, there's always an opportunity for a little fun. So that's what we really wanted to uh, focus on today are, um, you know, I'm not going to PowerPoint you to death in, in this discussion. I'm really just going to talk to you today. But I will provide a handout. So there's going to be key points that you'll get. Please take notes. A lot of adults learn that way by taking notes. So feel free to take notes on, on what I'm going to talk with you today about. Um, but don't feel like you have to. I will be providing you with a handout after. And um, let's go ahead and get started. First of all, there's only one rule for you to follow. It's very simple. You need to get creative on actionable and fun ideas. That's all you have to do is get creative. So talking with pharmacies over the past couple of weeks, you know, a few buckets of information, you know, as I'm talking with them, I was able to create buckets. So some common themes. And I'll share with you those common themes overarching, and then I'll dig into them. And then we'll be done. So bucket number one that came across literally everyone that I spoke with is communication. Flexibility, food, exercise, personal care, rewards and recognition, and providing resources. Alrighty, so creative ways to support your team's physical, mental, and emotional health. Communication, number one, do it more than you think you need to. This was uh, something that everyone that I spoke to mentioned um, was how important it is to communicate at a very high level. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, some of the feedback that I received was to really be vulnerable and authentic to your teams. And, and I'm talking about describing your own challenges and frustrations with what's going on. Uh, be a human. <laughs> One of the pharmacy owners I spoke with actually shared with her team she was getting therapy, and she encouraged the team to also get therapy. There's no shame in that. Um, if you aren't having meetings, you have to start having meetings, <laughs> period. There's no excuse anymore because you can have meetings in person or you can have them virtually. So there's no, oh, I can't find the time. None of my team is available at the same time. That doesn't matter anymore because you can also add those folks that can't be in person. They can be added in virtually. So no excuse. You're going to have to do meetings. <laughs> Daily huddles are the best, right? We're talking three to ten minutes, really quick, short, sweet, in the beginning and possibly at the end of the day, or one or the other, um, and then encouraging monthly team meetings at least as well. So these are really valuable times for you and um, can really help change the path of your employees' wellness, just communicating with them. Um, Another great idea that I heard and I definitely want to share with you is having an open door policy, but not open door 24-7, open door with specific times. So from 10 to 12 on Tuesdays and Thursdays is your open door policy that they can schedule times to come in and talk with you. Okay, so having boundaries around your open door policy. I think that's brilliant. Um, and also I've heard that you can actually take the team to lunch or an employee to lunch or, or a coffee to get them out of the pharmacy in case there needs to be some privacy around your conversation. And um, another idea that was shared with me is if you have a ton of employees, it might be hard to do that uh, consistently with every single employee every single month, but you could 
do birthdays, you know, and make one-on-one -on -one time with the team. Most importantly, whatever you're doing in terms of meetings is scheduling it out. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. It'll be three months down the road, and you're going to be like, shoot, I meant to have those meetings, and you didn't. So put it on the calendar, no excuses. Next on communication is start a mindfulness practice. Yes, I said it. <laughs> 30 seconds. And it can be, you know, go to your happy place for 30 seconds. We're going to have a minute of quiet time. Whatever that looks like for your team, I have heard that it really does change the demeanor of the pharmacy. Give it a shot. It can't hurt. It's 30 seconds to a minute, right? Um, so starting a mindfulness practice during your team lineup in the beginning of the day. Also, um, I heard some great insights around being the best place to work in town because apparently it's hard to find employees. So the employees that you have are getting worn out. So one way is attract the employees that are out there looking for jobs to your pharmacy because you're the best place in town to work and let that be known in the community. Um, another really cool idea that I hope some of you will take away and implement is creating a buddy system so that it's not just you as the pharmacy owner or the pharmacy leader. You actually have uh, like a network within your pharmacy of people that are checking in with each other. And that really helps to build your culture as well and create a very supportive culture. So um, the buddy system would allow check-ins to ensure some employee mental and emotional health. <laughs> um, so communication bucket, huge, probably the most important piece of what we're talking about today. Switch on down to flexibility. And honestly, you bend as much as you can. I get it. It's hard to you know, fill positions and it's hard to be flexible and be able to meet everyone's needs, but just be open about that and work with each individual on your team to try and find the best solution. Sometimes there's not going to be a solution and I understand that, um, but give everyone the time and the space to talk about it and see what can be worked out. One of my uh, pharmacy professionals that I spoke to was able to create a virtual workflow so that her employee could actually work from home and still be able to take care of the kids. Um, so it's kind of remote work. If there's opportunity for remote work, let that happen. Um, and also changing up schedules, being flexible with changing up the schedules. Um, that was also a big part of the flexibility bucket. Okay, food. It is always the answer, <laughs> I promise you. Um, providing healthy snacks at work instead of just junk food, you know, throw out the donuts, but maybe provide some things like fruit and nuts and protein bars and peanut butter filled pretzels and healthy drinks, snacks that are going to really rejuvenate your team. And I know having amazing coffee is great and that's something that you need at least for part of the day, but just be a little cautious of allowing uh, too much caffeine in the afternoon because that can really disrupt some people's sleep. So kind of discourage the afternoon late in the day caffeine consumption. Um, providing meals for the team. I'm sure you all currently are doing that in some format, but really being structured around it. So, but making it easy, right? Breakfast, lunch, or dinner, it doesn't matter what the meal is, as easy as possible. So for, for your morning lineup meetings, bring in coffee and bagels, or, you know, maybe on Friday for lunch, you're going to do pizza and salad, you know, something really easy, but food makes the world go round in the office setting. So, the more the merrier when it comes to food was the message I heard from across the entire country. Alrighty, we're moving on to exercise. The goal is to have the team work out daily. And these can be small things. There's Again, there's no excuse anymore because there is a YouTube opportunity for anything. Squats, sit-ups, yoga, whatever you want to do. Um, really help your team and encourage them to do some sort of exercise on a daily basis. It really will help to improve their wellness overall. Um, some really fun ideas that I heard were creating workout challenges. Um, there are some apps that can help you with that. I know my husband and I have done challenges with each other that are, it's on Map My Run, and you can do like furthest distance or most number of workouts in a month or, you know, things like that. Um, I've also heard of Step Bet is an app that you can use where everybody puts a little bit of money in and then whoever uh, wins, they, you know, gets a certain amount of the pot. 
You know what I mean? So that's a, a possibility. You don't have to even use an app, or there's probably a million other apps that you could utilize. Um, you could just ask your team to give you individual goals of working out for the month, and then um, you know track it or be an accountability partner, or their their buddy for their buddy system can be their accountability partner, right? And then um, make sure that they're you know creating that. Uh, accountability system for each other and then you know post on the whiteboard who achieved their personal workout goal that's hugely impactful for your team's wellness um, definitely don't underrate the workout challenge or just being an accountability partner in some way shape or form the other really cool thing I heard that I'm like why didn't I do that you know why didn't I come up with this but giving stretch breaks for your team like truly five to 10 minute stretch breaks where they raise their arms above their head. They bend forward, try and touch the floor, you know, just moving your body. Definitely encourage stretch breaks. And you can call them whatever you want, but I think stretch breaks is a cool term for them. Um, another idea is outreach to the community and partnering with the community where you're trying to find maybe a local yoga studio or a personal trainer and maybe they can work out a deal with your employees or maybe they come in and teach a class for your employees etc so you get the picture but exercise is hugely impactful for overall employee wellness physical emotional and mentally <laughs> it helps on all those fronts as well as food don't forget the food all righty moving right along here we've got personal care truly don't neglect yourself i've heard this time and time again how um, the pharmacy owners that I talked to really wanted to do more to help their employees take care of themselves. So some ideas that I thought were fun. Um, take home a massage therapist. So one of the folks that I talked to, they actually bought a Theragun, which is like a, a pressure massager, and they rotated the employees taking that home for a week at a time. And they thoroughly cleaned it, you know, it's just touching your back. And um, that was a really fun idea that everybody um, they they were working on different challenges to be able to take home uh, the Theragun and their massage therapist they called it. You could also ask for a massage therapist to actually come into the pharmacy and provide chair massage for your team if they would be interested in that maybe once a month um, or you could even provide a gift certificate and send them to a spa. You could do that for every single person on your team. If they are working their butts off and you feel that they all deserve it and they would enjoy that, by all means, right? Take care of them. Um, some other ideas were a take-home facial by providing like their products to do a facial and give them a gift bag that they can take home if they're really not comfortable going to a spa. Um, or if they are comfortable going to a spa, give them a gift certificate to go to a spa. And same thing with nails. So all of these are you know flexible options that you can really ensure your team is taking care of themselves. It's just a nice extra touch that um, you can provide for your team. Rewards and recognition is the next bucket. And this is how you're going to keep your employees. This is how you're going to be the best place to work. You know, um, I'll share with you some things that I heard um, that were helpful in terms of rewards and recognition. So number one, pay and bonuses. I heard that um, some of the people that I spoke to gave raises. And some, one of the pharmacy owners, she literally had to force her team to take their paid vacation time. They <laughs> were getting burnt out. And um, she forced them to take paid time off. So consider that as well. Also, under rewards in the recognition bucket, be intentional, or sorry, be intentional about recognizing your team and get really specific. So, you know, Sharon, I saw how well you took care of Mr. Smith. You explained his medicine. You suggested a probiotic. I thought that was amazing. You did a really good job, and you kept the line moving along because there was, you know, several people in line that day, I remember. So great job. You do an excellent, um, an excellent job of taking care of our customers, and I really appreciate that. So something really, really specific goes so much further than you guys did a great job this past week. Well done. 
you know, like see the difference of how much that makes an impact when it's like really truly specific to what they saw you do. And I guarantee you, whatever you specifically tell them will made an impact for you, you're going to see that behavior happen again and again. So be intentional about recognizing your team, show appreciation often, do it at team meetings so that the team knows what you're looking for and what you appreciate. And then those behaviors are going to come back to you tenfold from the team. Um, another awesome idea is to have either the leader or yourself or, you know, anybody on the team actually make a video and send it to the employee. So how impactful would that be if, you know, you were home, you got a, a video uh, chat from your boss or the owner of the pharmacy thanking you specifically for a job well done. And you get to show that to your kids and your spouse. I mean, that makes a huge impact and it's not that hard to do. Okay, so specific recognition, thanking them sincerely. Um, and the other idea that is huge and impactful is having the folks on your team recognize each other. It doesn't have to just be you recognizing everyone. Let them recognize each other in your team meetings. Like, has anybody seen anyone do anything spectacular this past week? Or who went above and beyond? You know, I can't be there for everything, so I want to hear from you guys. Be on the lookout, BOLO, right? I want to know what's going on in the pharmacy, and I want to know who's doing what. That's exceptional. I want to start recognizing those people. Okay, so having your team recognize each other is another huge part of, of what you can do for employee wellness. Last, but certainly not least, is providing resources. So if you provide benefits to your employees, check what is covered in terms of mental health resources, because sometimes there are mental health opportunities that are completely covered by the insurance that you're offering. Let them know that. Um, if not, make a list of mental health professionals, psychiatrists, counselors, um, you know, suicide prevention, um, meditation, yoga classes, etc., cetera, uh, where you're really making it easy for your team. I'm going to provide you with the CDC link. There are tons of hotlines and emotional health and, and mental health uh, support hotlines. So that way it's going to make that piece of it a little bit easy for you. And last but definitely not least is, you know, one of the pharmacies that I talked to, they actually brought in a counselor and had them uh, talk to the team as a group and then did some one-on-one -on -one sessions as well. So that could be an opportunity that you provide for your team as well, um, especially if you don't provide insurance benefits. Um, that could be something you kind of cover the cost and, and help them. And that is all I have today. I know that was a lot of information and I flew through it. Not to worry, we're going to provide you with all the key points of what I shared with you today. And I hope that you uh, are able to take at least one of the things that your fellow colleagues from across the country have shared with me and I am now sharing with you. Um, have a great day. Thank you very much. How do you become a more customer-centric pharmacy? The RMS Care Training Program will help you identify opportunities and develop solutions to provide a customer experience that everyone will be talking about. Well, welcome back. Um, I do have to say, although I would love to take credit for it, accountability buddies was not a Brandon Bolesky original term. Uh, credit for that that gem uh, actually goes to Trey Parker and his team. So, so thanks guys for that one. Um, but anyway, now is time to present the RMS Climb Ascenders Award. Climb Ascenders are pharmacies or individuals that go above and beyond for their teams, patients, and communities. Last month's Climb Ascender was Duran Central Pharmacy, who has done just that. Every RMS Climb Ascender receives an award from RMS, along with a $250 donation in their name to the local educational program of their choice. If you would like to nominate our next Climb Ascender, please visit our website and follow the links. Brad, would you like to announce this month's Climb Ascender? Yep, thanks, Brandon. It's my pleasure to congratulate Cassie and Trevor Thane and their staff at Topeka Pharmacy in Topeka, Indiana. And here's an awesome fact. Uh, Cassie and Trevor lobbied for their community and were the very first pharmacy in Indiana that was allowed to, to provide the COVID-19 vaccine. So congratulations on that as well. So every day they're working hard to reshape and rethink their pharmacy to better accommodate 
uh, the needs of their local community, taking what they learned throughout the pandemic, uh, they're remodeling their pharmacy to include two immunization stations, they're expanding the pharmacy itself, um, and all doing that while uh, they're focusing on the essential uh, front end business that their small community needs. Um, so they epitomize the tenants of climb in every way and everything they do. And I'm proud to congratulate them as this month's recipient of the Climb Ascender Award. So let's run a video that shows uh, Cassie and Trevor and their staff. Well, thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, coming up in June, as Brad mentioned, uh, Terry Norvell will be returning with an extended session. So make sure you tune in for that. Uh, today's recording will be available within the next hour at the same link that you use to view this live broadcast. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we'll be sending out that brief email survey in just a few moments. Please take the opportunity to share your thoughts with us. We would love your feedback. And also remember to share the climb event with your friends, colleagues, and coworkers. We would love to have them join us live next time. Brad. Okay, in just a moment, I'm actually going to run a video uh, that I recorded previously in the after climb session that's going to go through and show you uh, a few, a sneak peek of a few of the, the things that we've uh, released in version 832 that just went into general release last week. Um, and uh, there's 144 enhancement requests in that, so read the release notes, and I even talk about that in the video. Um, and then I'm going to do a sneak peek of the product that we just are about to release, we'll call uh, by RMS. It's in beta testing now. It'll be in general release in the next couple of weeks. Um, if you have questions uh, at the end, email us with the questions, or if you're interested in uh, will call by RMS, uh, send us an email and we'll get you set up. Uh, so thank you all very, very much for attending today. We really appreciate it. We look forward to having you back next, uh, next month. Have a great day. See you all later. Welcome back everyone and welcome to After Climb. This is the portion of the program where I get to do a deep dive into a part of our product. Um, today I'm actually going to talk about the general release of version 8.3.2. Now that just came out a couple of weeks ago and it has 144 enhancements. So a lot and a lot more that I'm going to cover today. I'm just going to cover a few of the key ones. Um, I would encourage you to come to the main menu and look at um, the till option parameter section and the star plus release notes. And when you click that, it'll take you to the release notes and it'll give you the table of contents and you can click on any of these areas that you're uh, interested in and read more details. Now I'm gonna start my demonstration in the till where I made just a couple of, of uh, changes that I think you're gonna find uh, useful. Now, for those of you who are not on an 8.3 version, uh, the till looks completely different. We've moved the flip charts to the side. Uh, your flip charts will convert right over uh, they'll be exactly the same. They're just, but just the layout's going to be different. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start by scanning a few items. And we've added a parameter that you can turn on. It's defaults to off. So when we do the uh, general release, when you get the upgrade, this parameter will not be on. You have to turn it on. But what it allows you to do is if you're charging to a customer's account, a house charge account, and that customer has a credit card on file using a token, uh, then the system can warn you 
that there's a there's a, a credit card available to charge to a token available and you can charge to that token or to that credit card instead of their house charge account this was a request we've had for many customers who are using a uh, tokenization um, but again it defaults to off so nothing changes if you don't turn this enhancement on so to show how it works i'm simply going to hit a house charge and i'm going to select a patient or customer in this case marie abernathy and when i hit enter it's going to let me know that Marie has an active uh, token and then we could charge to that token instead or credit card uh, instead of to their house charge account. Now I wanna so, show some features of house charge uh, change there. So I'm gonna hit escape here to go right on into doing a house charge. And the change I wanna show is that we've now added the patient's name, the customer's name here right next to the amount. So it's clear who you're charging to. Now a few versions ago, uh, many of you are aware that we added the ability to charge to multiple AR accounts in the same transaction. You didn't used to be able to do that. So I'll just use that. I'll just show that example as well by doing $10 to Marie's account. And it's showing the amount tendered at $10 and the amount remaining of $14.82. And now I can use any other tender, including a house charge. And just to show that working, I'll choose this house charge again. And let's go with uh, just one of these other accounts and we'll hit enter here and charge the remainder to that account. Okay, now we've done something very similar with the delivery uh, program. So if you're doing a delivery and uh, you choose a customer that has a token on file, it's simply going to come up and warn you that they have a token on file. So exactly the same situation so that you know that in advance. Okay. And those are the couple of changes at the till that I thought you'd be interested in. Now, one that I think you're really going to be excited about is a change we made in accounts receivable. So how many times have you had a situation where uh, you find out after the fact that uh, somebody charged to the wrong account and you have to go in to accounts receivable and do a couple of manual entries one to remove it from the, the, the account of the person it was charged to, and then a manual entry to get it onto the account where it belongs. It happens, right? And so we've created a change customer feature that allows you to do this in one step uh, and it's completely audited. And it's also controlled by a trust level, so not just anybody can come in and do this. So let me go ahead and pick, uh, let's pick uh, Pauline Anthony. I think she has a she might not have, yeah, she does. So here's a, here's a transaction uh, from earlier today that I did. Um, and uh, um, so I wanna change this transaction. And so I come to functions. Um, oh, excuse me, this is a transaction uh, that was already, I already moved this transaction in a, in a previous demo. So here's a transaction that hasn't been moved. So we'll go ahead and go change customer It'll come up and give me a list of all the customers. And um, I'll go ahead and just choose one of them here. I'll just go down to uh, Stephanie Montgomery. Click Add. And then click Change Customer. And I'm going to get this warning message that warns me that I'm about to do this and wants my approval. And my screen is locked. There we go. Um, and I'll say yes to this. So it's warning me so that I don't actually make a mistake. Click yes. And then it tells me that it's been moved. So I moved from Pauline Anthony to Stephanie Montgomery. Now it's going to refresh the screen and you're going to see that transaction uh, is now gone. Now, if I look under the audit trail for Pauline Anthony, you'll see here that we changed the customer on this transaction to this customer code. And there's the customer code, Stephanie Montgomery. So if I go to Stephanie Montgomery's account, under the audit trail, I'll see that we added this transaction from this account. And if we look at the accounts receivable detail, we'll see that transaction. So now it's in the right place. So I'm sure many of you are very happy about this. I know a number of people have asked about this for quite some time as well, but it makes it a one step. Okay, 
Um, the next thing I want to show is for those of you who have large front ends and a lot of vendors. Now, the vendor that, that, that I worked with um, on this particular change uh, has hundreds of vendors. So, and many of those vendors, as, as I'm sure for many of you, have minimums that have to be reached, either for um, dollar minimums or in some cases, quantity minimums. Um, and maybe it's a dollar minimum to have free, free freight, or maybe it's just a dollar minimum period. So in, in the vendor editor we've had for quite some time, the ability, and I'll just bring up real quickly uh, where this is set up. So in the vendor editor, um, under the vendor, you have this minimum purchase quantity, unit quantity, and then the min minimum purchase amount, $1,500 in this case. So Embarrassers Bergen would be a bad example to use, but I don't have any products from any other vendors in my system, um, that Cardinal and McKesson. So any of the drug wholesalers, really, this isn't useful for. But for those of you with lots of vendors that have those kinds of restrictions, you can set up the vendor and you can set up these, these two fields. Then under inventory control, you can set up a, a scheduled calc order calculation and you can set it up so that it runs every single uh, day on the same day and it looks uh, to see what's available to order for that particular vendor. And you can set up you know, hundreds of vendors that way. So it's doing these order calculations daily. And then uh, each day you can come into the order set viewer. Now the order set viewer used to always look like this where it just was a long list of all of the potential orders with no way to filter. Now we've added in this version, we've added the ability to filter uh, by minimum purchase quantity or minimum purchase amount. So when I go minimum purchase amount, I now see that I have one vendor that has 276 items and $1,933 uh, with a minimum amount of $1,500. So right from here, I can then create my purchase order. And so imagine if you have hundreds of vendors and this is happening every day and each day you can come in and maybe on Monday it's found 30 vendors that you can order from and on Tuesday it found another 20. And each day you come in, you can simply highlight all the orders you want to place and you can do that using standard Windows tools. So you can, if there's there are 10 orders and you want to do all 10 of them, you can highlight the first one hold the shift key down and go to the bottom one and it'll highlight all of them. You can do the control and, and click uh, on each one to highlight them. So you can use all those standard features from Windows. Um, and then you can simply click generate POs. You also have the ability to look at the detail. I didn't mention that. So you can click detail and it'll show you all the items that are uh, in the order and you can delete them from there as well. Um, but you can cl click generate POs and if there are 30 item orders that you've the, uh, that you've selected, it'll generate 30 POs, one for each of the of the vendors. I'll say yes to this, and now it's created the one purchase order, and now this order said viewer is empty. I know this is going to save a lot of time for those of you that that do this. For those of you who don't know about, didn't even know about the ability of the system to do scheduled orders and scheduled calculations, this is a new feature that you can look into. And you can do the F1 help, which will take you to uh, directly into this area, or you can just call our support team and they'll help you get all of this set up. Okay, now um, a couple of the other things that I just will point out real quickly, for those of you who are doing delivery with our system and using the Android delivery application, we did enhance that to now include, so before you could put the relationship of the patient and the signature for the pickup, You've, we've now added HIPAA signatures and safety cap decline signatures. Uh, if, those, if those would have been cut, uh, captured in the store, they can be captured on the delivery application as well. Um, we've also, for those of you that are doing law, online uh, web uh, with a web store, you have an online presence. As you know, in uh, the product manager, um, for those of you who don't know this, I'm just going to go in really quickly into the product manager and show you that you have the ability to set up online a web presence. And we have interfaces with two companies now. Um, so if I go into Product Manager and I go to the uh, Sales Parameters tab, there's a field called Online Item. And if I say yes to this, it's now setting that item up to be an online item. Um, 
that means that from that point on, that item will communicate with which, whichever uh, uh, e-commerce site that we're, that we're interfaced to. Um, it'll communicate the products that are the, the, the UPC, the description, the retail, the on-hand quantity uh, up, up to uh, that service. So those of you who are already doing this are doing it with Ecom Dash. Uh, and then we've just added a new uh, company, 24-7 Commerce. And uh, I will show you really quickly their website. So for those of you who aren't familiar with this, 24-7 Commerce and Ecom Dash are both middleware. They sit between the point of sale system, our system, and then all of these e-commerce sites. So in the example here, Shopify, WooCommerce, uh, um, Magneto, uh, um, Amazon, eBay, Walmart, any of Google Shopping, all of these places that you could have your products and services uh, uh, on a website, on an e-commerce site. So they sit in between. They communicate with them. Uh, we communicate with 24-7 Commerce. And when an order is fulfilled, uh, it, like, say Shopify or, or WooCommerce or any of these sites, uh, when that's fulfilled, that information is sent back down through 24-7 Commerce and into the POS system uh, at the till. So it shows that there was an online sale uh, that day, um, and then you fulfill the order. Um, so more to follow for those of you that are interested, but I wanted to announce that 24-7 Commerce, that interface, which many of you have been waiting for, is now available with A32. Okay, the other one that I want to talk about, going back to the main menu, is uh, interface with Pointy. So we'll go sign up for Pointy. So for those of you not familiar with Pointy, Pointy is owned by Google. Um, they were bought by Google uh, about a year ago, I believe. And, um, and what Pointy does is it simply sends information. When you sell an item at the till, it sends that information up into, uh, into uh, the Pointy platform and builds a database of the things that you carry in your store. And at that, um, when a customer or when a person is uh, on Google, looking for a specific product, uh, it will find that you sell that product and it will show up in the search as stores near me that are carrying this product that I'm searching for. And to set this up, you simply go to next and type in the information. And I'm just gonna show you how easy this is. And this is my email address if you want to write it down. That's the company phone number. Then you choose uh, what your dates and times of opening are. You can mark this close. So let's say we're closed on Sunday and we're open from 8 to 8, Monday through Friday, and 8 to 5 on Saturdays, because it's going to list that. It's going to give you store information, and it's going to give your store hours. Double check all of this is accurate. Click next. It's actually going to set you up uh, so that this is all real time. This is exactly how it's going to work for you. It's going to tell you that the setup is complete. It's going to take you to the screen here. It's going to show your status. And it's going to show that nothing's been uploaded at this point in time. Um, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and disable this so that nothing happens here. Um, but, uh, but that's all there is to it. And then you're set and ready to go. And now when somebody Googles any of the products that you're selling uh, in your store, uh, you're going to show up as uh, that price available to, in, you know, near that person. It's going to show your store and that your store information. Okay, I'm just going to turn that off so I don't forget. Okay, now that's it for version 832. Um, like I said, there's 144 enhanced requests, so go through those release notes for, for more details. For my final demonstration, I am excited to show you and announce the release of Will Call by RMS. This is our new Will Call management application. It is a web-based, browser-based application um, 
we will give you a URL and then you use your uh, Star Plus credentials to log in at this screen. So here's the login screen. I'll put in my Star Plus credentials. And now I'll be at the home page. So many of you today are not using any kind of will call management application. You're simply, you may have some plastic bags that hang on hooks. You're putting all the prescriptions for a patient into those bags. Um, some of you are doing it in paper bags and putting all the receipts on the outside of the bag and sticking that in will call. And you have a will call location and maybe a refrigerator where you have some things that will call as well. So what we're going to do is help you organize that to give you the advantage of two things, being able to see very easily the things that have been there for over a certain number of days, as well as being able to scan one barcode at the register and have it ring up all of the prescriptions that are in the bag. So those are the two key features of this particular product. So the first thing I want to talk about is locations. So I mentioned your standard will call bin location, uh, the hanging racks, um, and we just named it standard will call. You can change the name. You can add as many will call locations as you'd like, but that's what we called it. The other is the refrigerator. Um, so we think this is probably what typically people would do, but you could do, uh, depending on the size of your will call area, you could do many different things. But that's going to be what we're going to start with here. And then those bags that you put uh, the prescriptions in, we're referring to those as containers. Some are plastic bins, some are plastic bags, some are paper bags, but we refer to them as containers. It's easy to create a sequence of containers. You tell it the starting number, the ending number, and it'll create all of those containers. You can create individual containers one at a time. And when you've got your containers created and you want to print those barcodes to put on those hanging plastic bags or bins or whatever, you simply go to print barcodes. You choose one of two different Avery labels, which you can order, at a, you can get at your office supply store or you can order online. Um, no reason for us to, you know, for you to order them from us when you can simply get them Avery labels anywhere. Um, so you print those Avery labels out and you uh, put those onto the plastic bags. And now you're ready to start uh, creating your, your will call packages. So you simply go to create will call package. You scan the barcode from one of those plastic bags that's empty. So I'm going to scan a barcode on a plastic bag. It'll take me to the uh, packaging screen. And now I scan the prescriptions for that patient. And it shows me the prescription number, the patient's name, that I've scanned the receipt. Um, you have the option of turning on a primer where not only do you have to scan the receipt, but you have to scan the vial the matching vial to ensure that you've got the receipt and the vial in the bag and it's all for the same patient. Um, I've turned that off, so I'm just scanning the receipt and not having to scan the vial. And it's showing you the status is that this is a, this complete. So once you've scanned all the prescriptions that are going to go into that bag, you click finalize to finalize this package. It'll ask you where you're placing it. I have mine defaulting to the standard will call bin area. I could choose the refrigerator if that's where it's going and then I click save. So I do this throughout the day. And again, it's a web browser, so I can have this at any of the pharmacy management uh, workstations where I'm actually filling and, and you know preparing prescriptions to go to will call. Now, I'm gonna take you and show you what happens over at the register. So I'm gonna go over to the register and I'm gonna scan uh, the barcode for that, for that uh, package that I just set up. And so it's going to it's going to look at the will call uh, application and pull that information in, and it pulled both prescriptions. Like I said, if there are eight prescriptions in the bag, it would that uh, scanning that one barcode would bring all of those prescriptions in. There was a little delay here just because of my uh, I'm doing a Zoom meeting, uh, so there's a little bit of a delay. But that typically when I'm not doing a Zoom meeting, I'm just uh, testing this. It takes one to two seconds for those prescriptions to to ring up, so it's very fast. So now it's saved you the time at the register of having to scan multiple receipts. You just scan the bag and you're finished with the scanning. Now they can still delete if they don't want to buy a prescription, you can take it out, no problem there. Um, but the will call part just makes it simple to scan the one barcode. 
Okay, so now let's go back into the will call application. Um, we have this in will call for over 10 days. This is a parameter. This is the second feature. So you can set this to 10 days, 12, 12 days, 14 days, seven days, whatever number you want. And then it'll show you anything that's exceeding that, that number or anything that's that number or higher. Um, I'm gonna go into settings and I'm gonna change that to say two days so that I can show you what it looks like when something shows up. So go back to home and it'll refresh that screen. And now there's gonna be one, per, one package that uh, has, that has uh, been there for more than two days. And so I can click on this when I see there's stuff in here. And now it'll give me the list of all of the packages that I need to pull and I need to return to stock uh, with my, my pharmacy system. And it also tells you the number of prescriptions that are in that bag. Um, so you just print this, walk over to will call, pull container two, take it over to the pharmacy system and return it to stock. And when you do that, it'll come out of, um, and then and you'll delete it from here. And that is, uh, that's, that's a very simple, uh, but cost-effective will call application. It's in beta now. It should be in general release in the next uh, week or so. Uh, we're excited. We're hearing good things from our beta sites, and we're excited to get it out there. This does not require uh, version 8.3.2. So any of you that are interested in it, contact us, and we'll get you set up, and we look forward to hearing your feedback. Everybody have a terrific day, and thank you for taking the time to be with us today. Cheers.